Good evening, I'm Emma Jane Vaughan. This is Television Tonga News. In the headlines, the National Reformation Centre begins construction of its new centre at Hadeho. The Prime Minister Lord Duvarano discharged from a hospital in New York today. And Breast Cancer Awareness Month marked in Tonga this month. Let's take a look at the news in detail. The National Reformation Centre, headed by Reverend Gilepi and Luciola Misa, is building a new youth centre at Hadeho. Here's Kalaini Tongilava with more on that story. The patron of the National Reformation Centre, Her Royal Highness Princess Bilole Wutuita, was the guest of honour at the blessing of a piece of land where the centre is located. Her Royal Highness also officiated at the groundbreaking ceremony held last Saturday. The estate holder, Lord Teha Teho, and his family attended the ceremony. Princess Pilolevu told the gathering that it was a historic day for the children and the youth at the centre, and people who support the effort to set up a new centre for the youth play a vital role, as it's God's wish to help the children who are in need. Her Royal Highness also said that such help for the youth is similar to the message from God in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 3 He will not break the bruised reed nor quench the dimly burning flame He will encourage the faint-hearted those tempted to despair He will see full justice given to all who have been wronged Meanwhile, according to Reverend Luciola Misa, they have raised money and other building materials donated from the people during radio funds, and she believes that God will provide the rest of the construction materials. Following the ceremony, Princess Pilarevu Tuita led the guest in inspecting handicrafts displayed at the program before guests were served with luncheon. Girls at the Reformation Centre are given temporary housing at the Girl Guides Home, according to the Chief Commissioner of the Girls Guide Association, Halai Valupalo. Reporting for Television Tonga News, I'm Galo Laine Tonglava. The Prime Minister, Lord Duvrano, is reportedly well and is now in an excellent condition. He is expected to be discharged from hospital in New York today. That's according to the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly, Lord Fafanua. He told the House this morning that in a phone conversation with Tonga's ambassador to the United Nations, Mahe Uli Uli Tupouniwa Jr., he was told that doctors would decide on when the Prime Minister would be fit to take his flight back home. Kalani Tongilava with the details. Meanwhile, the Acting Chief Secretary and the Acting Secretary to Cabinet, Ahalot Balu, had also confirmed of the Prime Minister's excellent condition to radio and television Tongan news this morning. Mr. Balu has been accompanying the Prime Minister to the United Nations General Assembly in New York City. In an email response to requests for information from radio and television Tongan news, Mr. Balu wrote that his lordship was admitted to hospital for chest pain. He said that doctors were very responsive and treated the pain with proper procedures and medication. Mr. Balu also said that Lord Duvano is now in an excellent condition after the treatment. He is tentatively booked to return to Tonga this weekend, depending on his doctor's advice. Lord Ma'afu first revealed the news about the Prime Minister's health condition in the Legislative Assembly yesterday. He told the House that Lord Duvano has suffered a mild stroke, but in a stable condition. Lord Ma'afu also asked for prayers for the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister accompanied their Majesties, King Dubo VI and Queen Anaspao, in representing the Kingdom to the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Reporting for Television Tonga News, I am Kalolaini Tonglava. No acting Prime Minister is required to the position if the Prime Minister is away. It's according to the Constitution and the Government Act. Instead, this is replaced by a minister in charge. Therefore, the current position for the head of cabinet is referred to as the minister in charge and not the acting prime minister. This was clarified by the Honourable Minister of Land, Survey, Environment and Natural Resources, Lord Ma'afu, to Television Tonga News this, uh, after this morning's parliamentary deliberations. The issue was raised in parliament after the Speaker of the House, Lord Farafanua, confirmed to the members of the House this morning that there is no title of Acting Prime Minister. The matter was raised by Dongadapu People's Representative Number 2, Semisika. 
In response, the Minister of Land, Survey, Environment and Natural Resources, Lord Ma'afu, confirmed his role, which is not acting Prime Minister, but Minister in Charge. Lord Ma'afu told the House that the role of the Minister in Charge is similar to that of a caretaker. Furthermore, the Minister in Charge is not authorised to change any government policy, but act as a government representative in Parliament. The second school's it, uh, entrance examinations began this morning. Thousands of Class 6 students sat the first examination this morning, which was English. Fononga Veikoso visited some of the examination centres and filed this report. These are some of the Class 6 students at Fasi Muyafi Government Primary School as they set their first examination this morning. In the morning, they set the English paper and then the mathematics exam in the afternoon. At Kolomodua Government Primary School, the head supervisor Le Motifi now told Television Tonga News that the students were excited to take the exam this morning. Class 6 students in all the government primary schools have been preparing and taught by the students for this very exam. I believe they are confident and ready and will do well in the exam. There are about 60 class 6 students at Kolomodua Government Primary School. Some class 6 students at Fasimoyafi Government Primary School shared their feelings about today's exams. I thought the exam would be really hard, but as I read it through, it was easy and exactly what the teacher taught us. I found part of the exam a bit difficult, but I prayed to God to give me knowledge and strengthen me. There's an increase in class 6 students sitting this year's exam, according to the head supervisors for Nukalofa and Fasimoyafi, Tevita Pupunga Toama and Isinito Fakaosi. There are 117 class 6 students sitting the exam for Nukalofa Government Primary School, while 82 students sit from Fasi Moyafi. Contact was made to the Ministry of Education for the total number of class 6 students sitting the exam this year, but to no avail. For Nove Koso for Television Tonga News. Four deaths have been recorded for breast cancer in Tonga this year. That's according to a report from the Ministry of Health, which was presented this morning at an initial program to mark the beginning of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the Kingdom. The guest of honour at today's ceremony was the patron of the Tonga Breast Cancer Society, Her Royal Highness Princess Bilolev Dwita. The president of the society is Honourable Fatafehi Olabaha Dwita Philippe. Here's Anasiu Fanikaon with more on that story. The theme being highlighted this year is Let's Talk, a report on the statistics of breast cancer in Tonga was presented by the Ministry of Health, Dr. Anna Akaola. Amongst cancer incidents in four Pacific countries, including Tonga, in 2000 and 2005, showed that leading cancers in the women in Tonga is led by breast, followed closely by uterine and cervical cancers. In other words, being a woman predisposes us to cancer as these organs define our femininity. Because we don't because we do not have breast screening such as mammography yet, yet, it is important that women in Tonga, we must, as women in Tonga, we must continue to do our self-breast examination. And if we feel any changes to the texture of our breast, seek help as fast as we could. Majority of those diagnosed with breast cancer gets treatment in Tonga, which is surgery. Some get to be sent for chemo or radiotherapy or both in Australia, paid for by the government. A few may not need the chemo or radiotherapy because they came early enough and that their cancer is not aggressive. There are, however, a few patients that once diagnosed, disappears from the system until they present a few years later when it is too late to do anything anymore, as they chose to go for Tongan medicine. I would like to emphasize here that breast cancer is one of those that are treatable if caught early enough, and that it will not go away without proper treatment. Dr. Akaola says that cancer is classified as a non-communicable disease. This increases
increase in those that drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes. It is also more common in those who eat meat and animal fats and thus are overweight. There is less risk in those who eat fish, especially oily fish like tuna and salmon, and exercise five times a week and eat more vegetables and fruits. In conclusion, the take home message for this morning is this. Breast cancer is treatable if present early. If left untreated, no amount, um, no amount of leaves will save you. Breast cancer, like diabetes and hypertension, is a disease of lifestyle. We must eat healthy, exercise, and stop smoking and drink alcohol to, minima to minimize the chance of getting breast cancer. Dr. Akaola advised the gathering to do routine medical checkups, especially when they notice a change in their body. Members of the diplomatic cause, representatives of various government and non-government organizations, and guests attended this morning's program. To highlight breast cancer awareness this month, the society has organized a series of programs, including an event by the Pascala Nuk Alofa, a parade and other programs. A 5.4 magnitude earthquake was felt by many people in Nugalofa at about 20 minutes before 12 midday today. The geology department has confirmed that there was no threat of a tsunami. The deputy secretary of the natural resources department, which the geology department is under, Daniela Gula, told Television Tonga News that the earthquake was located at 38 kilometers northeast of Nugalofa. It had a depth of 40 kilometers. Two of the government public enterprises, Tonga Print and Tonga Post, have officially merged and is now known as Tonga Post. Tonga Print was formerly known as Tonga Printing Office and Tonga Post replaced the Tonga Post Office. The merge began with making some of the employees of Tonga Print redundant in accordance with one of the government's new moves. The Minister for Public Enterprises, Honorable Fe Alvarata, last evening presented redundant payments to 14 employees of Tonga Print. Television Tonga News, Sinila tells you more. The decision on Tonga Print was made following discussions on the current state of the company, which is no longer commercially viable. Discussions were made between the Minister for Public Enterprises, Honorable Fe'a Wakata, and his senior officers and the chairperson of the Tonga Print Board, Tapu Banove, and his directors. According to Honorable Wakata, the decision to merge both companies has to be made despite its consequences. Staff, it was not an easy decision, but I and the CEO and his deputy believed that it was the right decision to make. Employees are aware of the need to carry out the decision and regrettably it affects us. I believe the decision was meant to be made instead of prolonging the problem we may be left with nothing to take back home with us. In an interview with the chairman of the Tonga Print Board of Directors, Tapu Panuve, he revealed the reason behind the merger. Tonga Print. Tonga Print, as of the end of September, has 22 employees. Government has to implement its restructuring exercise. As of this stage, had Tonga Print continued operating up to October, there is no money to pay the staff. Under this restructuring, 14 of the 22 employees are being made redundant, while eight remain being employed. The reduction in the number of staff was to lessen the amount required for their salaries so they could still be employed. So the aim is to reduce cost while maintaining the level of revenue being generated. Mr. Banuwe also said they are hopeful of favorable results from the restructuring where more people could be hired. Meanwhile, one of the redundant is Siale Paholo. I'm grateful for the government's help through our salaries since we began working in the 1970s. That has been a major help to our families. We have gladly accepted what we have reached today, and we know this is God's plan. Meanwhile, Siale Taufa has been working for Tonga Print for 36 years, since 1977. I have worked for many years. Even though I expected more money from government, I do not complain. Perhaps this is God's plan. Also attending yesterday's program was the CEO of the Ministry of Public Enterprises, 
Siaosi Sovaleni and staff of Tonga Print. The Sopuota Fahang Fishing Council has received a boat thanks to the Fishery Department and the council is optimistic of higher catch that would generate more income for their families. The Honourable Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Seng Star Saulala, launching the new fishing boat of the Sopo Tafa Ahau Fishing Council that was donated after the Honourable Minister received a request from them. According to the Minister, fishing helps inject more income to Tonga's economy. The fishing sector generated about 5 million paanga to local fishermen in September alone. This in regards to the 4.7 million paanga collected during the exceptional period of harvesting, processing and exporting of sea cucumber. According to the Sopotaufa Ahau Fishing Council Secretary, Lopeti Prescott, the Fishing Council was set up with seven members only. Currently, the Fishing Council has more than 100 members. The boat was presented to us after being uh, renovated at a cost of 5,000 paanga. Meanwhile, we are now marking the second anniversary of our council. Present at the presentation program was the Tontapu Number no. 1 People's Representative, Akilisi Pohiva, the CEO of the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries and Food, Losalina Maasi, some of the diplomatic corps and other guests. The Tokakawa Farmers Association has been awarded 100,000 baanga in loan to help with harvesting of squash pumpkin. The money is being made available under the soft loan scheme of 1 million baanga the government has set aside to help farmers. The scheme is being implemented by the Agriculture Fund Committee of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fishery, Forestry and Food. Linda Filiai with more on that story. The Dogagawa Farmer Association will use the money to cover expenses on harvesting, transportation and preparation of squash pumpkin for export. The Honourable Minister of Agriculture, Seng Star Saulala, signed an agreement for releasing of this association loan. I understand the harvesting season of squash pumpkin is now underway. The three companies that have received funds from this loan scheme include exporters and farmers. We are hoping that farmers will receive really good returns from this produce. The main aim of this fund is to help improve export and generate income to the overall national economy. The chairman of the Tokakawa Association, Paula Mosaati, thanked the Ministry of Agriculture for accepting their loan request. The majority of us have completed planting squash pumpkin and we are yet to harvest it. We don't have enough money for this work. We shall use this money to help us with harvesting and transporting our produce to export out for shipment. The Tokakawa Association includes farmers from different districts of Tongatapu. About 30% of the 1 million paanga funds has been borrowed by local farmers and exporters. Sports is up next with Pierre Ollier.